Welcome to Life and Living, I'm Joanna Gagas. It was in his grandma's kitchen early in his life when Jamie Knott says he learned how food, family, and community work together. Today, he's received critical acclaim for his culinary work. He is Jamie Knott, chef and owner of the Saddle River Inn, Cellar 335 and Saddle River Cafe. Welcome to the program, Jamie. Thanks for having me, it's great to be here. It's great to have you. You continually appear in all of our New Jersey publications as a restaurant <laughs> that you, a chef that you should be experiencing, a restaurant that you should be going to. That is, of course, the Saddle River Inn. Um, but you started in your grandma's kitchen. I did. Um, I have a big family, a lot of cousins, and my grandmother cooked professionally when I was a kid. So there was always, you know, ham in the oven or turkey breast or four pots on the stove. She made crab soup, which is like, World famous in, and in Baltimore. And this was in Maryland, in, in yeah, Baltimore. Yeah, this was in yeah. Baltimore, Maryland, okay. where I was born. Yeah. Correct. So you eventually transplanted to Nutley, New Jersey, where you and I actually went to high school together. Yes, we right? did. Right? <laughs> we have to, have to let the audience know that. Jamie and I go way back, but really, was it in high school that you started to understand that this could be something for you? I don't think I understood much of anything in high school, but um, <laughs> I knew that I wasn't meant for an office or a nine-to-five job. And... I knew that I liked girls, and there was a lot in the home ec class. So, you know, that's where I had, that's where I kind of grabbed. And there was food. That's right? where I gravitated towards. <laughs> yeah. Yes, food was. You could food eat. Food was you probably could... second most important. <laughs> right. um, I went to home ec for four years in high school, and I just I kind of loved it. And I got a job as a busboy at the Franklin Steakhouse when I was thirteen years old. Um, and you know, it was it grabbed me from there. I and loved they it. they let you at the time it was Johnny Mags, right? Was the owner. Johnny I also Maggs worked the at the owner. Franklin Steakhouse. <laughs> a lot of people uh, cut their teeth there. Yes, they did. Um, but you you got some experience not just as a busboy, but they let you start experiment experiencing the food and putting together salads and things, right? Well, Johnny was big into football, so on Sundays he was never there, and I would sneak back into the kitchen. I started working the salad station, then I would watch the saute guys. I love the action. I love the camaraderie. You know, it was kind of an adrenaline rush, if you will, and that's that's what hooked me from the beginning. Reading through your your bio, essentially, I mean, there's so much experience that you've had over the years. Some places for a short time, some places for for longer. Um, but you very, very quickly rose through the ranks. How old were you when you first became an executive chef? Uh, 25. That's really young. It is really young, but I started really young. You know, at 13, I, I, I was a busboy, a bar back, a food runner. I kind of got to know all the inner workings of a restaurant. And then I started cooking, really, when I was 16 at Scuttlebutts, which was also in Nutley. Yep. You know, a kind of uh, Irish-American pub. And Michael Fitzsimmons was the chef, and their family was great to me. And he let me work in the kitchen three, four days a week. You were executive chef at China Grill. At China Grill, that's City. right. Um, so many other, too many, too many to, <laughs> to note. Um, but a lot of them were inside the corporation of China Grill under right. the umbrella. So I got that job when I was 24, actually, as the executive sous chef. And the executive chef left about a year and a half later, a year, year and a half, to go open another concept for the company. And that's when they asked me to move up to executive chef. When did you know you wanted to be doing your own thing, have your own restaurant? I knew early, early on. I was supposed to open a restaurant when I was 21, actually, in Montclair. Uh, that's another story for another time. Okay. But it, it didn't work out, but everything does work out, even if you don't understand it when it's happening. Right. You know, now things seem to be okay, so I can't be unhappy and dwell on the past. But um, I knew I needed a lot of experience. So from executive chef, I then went to a corporate role. I became a corporate executive chef for a large company, BLT Group. Mm -hmm. You know, they have 52 restaurants worldwide. So that was invaluable. I mean... How do you take all of that experience and translate it into what's become a super successful restaurant in Saddle River, New Jersey? I think mostly it's uh, setting yourself up for success, you know. How so? Tangibles. <clears throat> understanding food cost, understanding labor cost, understanding all those fixed costs, you know, because restaurants not just about cooking. That's when I went to culinary school, that's all I wanted to do. When I got out of culinary school and rose up the ranks, I was just moved further and further away from that because I have a decent business acumen. So they kind of would pull me out of the kitchen as much as possible. And the only way I could get back in the kitchen really was opening my own restaurant. Right. And I cook, you know, five nights a week. I work a station because I want to immerse myself in it. It's, it's what I love. Describe I think it's what food. I'm meant to do. Describe the food. Describe the vibe there. <laughs> the vibe. It's almost like a, like a private club. 
It really is. It's you know fine dining, right? It's super Very fine upscale. dining. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it looks like a Vermont lodge that was placed in Saddle River, sitting right on the bank of the Saddle River. You really, know. really a throwback to what Bergen County used to look like. Yeah, right? definitely farmland and and farmland, equestrian center kind of feel to it. You're expanding. You I am. just opened Cellar 335. Can we take a look at it? Yes, absolutely. All right. Let's take a look. I think Cellar 335 is a concept people haven't seen before. It's American food with Asian accents and a uh, tiki style bar. I think the key was to keep it fun, exciting, flavorful. Our chef de cuisine is from Georgia, so there's some southern influence. Our sous chef is from the Philippines, so we have some, some authenticity in the food and flavors. Cellar 335 looks great. Describe it. What's it going to be like? <laughs> it's kind of hard to describe. It's um, Basically, it's, it's an American restaurant with Asian theme and a tiki bar. So we're taking a lot of Why Polynesian all those flavors. Concepts? Why? <clears throat> describe how that all works together. I, I love, there's something about Asian food that I love. And a tiki bar is fun. And I think it's different. And I think that's kind of something that Jersey City was missing. You know, we ate around the city. You know, my partner and myself and my director of operations, we ate around the city to find what's kind of not out there. You know, uh, it's a lot easier to hit a home run when you find a space that isn't saturated. Right. In the market, so. Who do you find is your crowd there? Uh, it's so different. It's so diverse. I mean, we can have, you know, 21-year-old college students coming over from Hoboken, and we have 80-year-old you know, art collectors that live in and around Jersey City. It's a very diverse crowd. One of the it's really, really cool nice. things about Jersey City, right, Absolutely. is the eclectic. Uh, it's very eclectic, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Saddle River Cafe, talk about it. Right behind the Saddle River Inn, just across the river, there's a small strip, and there's been a vacant spot on the corner for about three years. And I drive by it twice, three times a week, and it just... I keep looking at it and looking at it and looking at it, and it, it finally came to fruition. Um, I like to dine out a lot. I like to see what's going on, what's trending in the city. You know, we're closest, we're very close to one of the greatest food cities in the world, so I eat there often. So what's, what is the concept? The concept is uh, fresh, vegetable-focused uh, breakfast and lunch spot to start. We're going to do breakfast and lunch, and then we'll probably segue into dinner. We'll see how it plays out. So the demands on a chef are so great, right? You have to be in the restaurant every day, holidays. How are you going to manage, how are you managing going from one location to three? Team. Explain that. Teamwork is everything. I, I hire people that are better than me in certain areas that I can manage and work with. And that's how I grow, that's how I learn. That's the only way I can grow. I can't be everywhere at once. It was very hard for me to go from one to two because I'm a control freak and I wanted to be there. And geographically speaking, Jersey City is, you know, 40 miles from Saddle River. Right. It's hard to be in two places at once. So I have a great chef. I have a great director of operations, bar manager. I mean, I have really amazing teams. And that's, that's the key. I would say you have a great life. You have a beautiful wife at home, Krista, <laughs> three beautiful kids, two dogs. Two dogs. Right? Jamie Knott is living the life, but more importantly, he's giving us uh, an experience. Chef and owner of the Saddle River Inn, Cellar 335 and Saddle River Cafe. Check him out. Thank you so Thank much. You. It was awesome. It was great. Life and Living has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Life and Living with Joanna Gagas has been provided by TD Bank. New Jersey Resources, New Jersey Sharing Network, Choose New Jersey, the Northward Center, the New Jersey Office of the Insurance Fraud Prosecutor, and by Verizon. Additional support provided by Melandre Salon and Sulis Spa. Look beautiful, feel beautiful. Life and Living with Joanna Gagas has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.